Never since I've started with film photography have I had a film stock recommended to me more times than Fomapan, often on the basis of these being good performing cheap black and white film stocks. I was eager to give these film stocks a try and to see if they were any good, so I ordered a few rolls of Fomapan 100 with only one question on my mind. Can this $5 film stock really be as good as people are saying? Fomapan 100 is a classic crane black and white negative film stock with a nominal sensitivity of 100 ISO, although the latitude on this film is fairly impressive. I'm going to get into that a little bit more later. I was able to pick my rolls of Fomapan 100 up for about $5 per roll, and that seems to be kind of the going average between $5 and $7 per roll, depending on where you look and on where you live. The film is available in pretty much any format that you would need, from 35mm cassettes, medium format rolls, all the way up to various sizes of sheet film if you wanted to large form photography with this film. Now, unlike Kodak and Ilford, which are companies that I've heard of and that practically everyone else has too, FOMA was a company that I hadn't really heard anything about before researching this film stock. Now, the Fomapan line of films is manufactured by a company that has faced some pretty insane odds in their just over 100 year history. From near bankruptcy several times in their early years to Nazi occupation, Soviet rule, and even surviving a revolution. FOMA still continues to manufacture FOMAPAN as well as a select line of other film stocks in their hometown of Hradec Kralove in the Czech Republic. FOMA's history as a company is really fascinating and I sincerely believe that they wouldn't have been able to survive today had they not decided to focus on exclusively making inexpensive black and white products, of which there aren't really very many on the market today. So I think that's a niche that they can survive very well in, and I'm happy that the company was able to recognize that. Now the question is, is this film stock going to be any good? When I was researching the film before I bought it, the reviews online that I was able to find were very few, but they weren't all positive. Some of them were quite positive, and others really hated this film stock. So to decide for myself, I exposed two rolls in my Nikon FM together with my 50mm f1.4 AIS lens and my Nuko Q 200mm f4 telephoto lens. I shot all of the rolls of Fomapan 100, just doing some general purpose photography around the early spring this year and I sent all of the rolls off to the darkroom lab for processing. Now one interesting note on the shooting experience for FOMA Pan 100 is the fact that FOMA advertises the fact that this film has a very wide exposure latitude that can handle up to one stop of overexposure and two stops of underexposure without needing to adjust the chemistry while still being able to rely on the film to give you really good results. And so far I found this to be true. Effectively it lets you treat this film as a 50, 100, 200 and 400 ISO film all on one roll without needing to push or pull process. If properly exposed, Fomapan 100 delivers somewhat smooth and fairly good mid-tone contrast, going rich dark black in the shadows and bright white in the highlights, especially if you're dealing with contrasty lighting situations. The dynamic range of this film is not quite as high compared to some of the more expensive competition from Kodak or Ilford, but it's still fairly good. Shadow detail for the most part holds up fairly well until you get into the really dark shadows, then things block up pretty quickly. Highlights also are fairly good and don't blow out too easily however once they go white they go completely white the exposure latitude of this film as i mentioned is really really good i was impressed with how much underexposure this film could handle while still delivering good results and the overexposure performance of this film stock is fairly good as well very much in line with what i would expect from a negative film stock. This film has a very classic, old-timey feel that I really, really enjoy that I don't really seem to get from many more modern film stocks. I find it's a similar sort of old-school look as Kodak Triax, but not quite as gritty and intense. It has a, a nice and old-fashioned appeal to it that I really, really enjoy. One thing that I noticed, especially around highlighting areas on the negative, was a bit of halation, more halation than I'm typically accustomed to from black and white film stocks. This possibly plays into that feeling of an old time, more classic look that I was describing. 
Now, for being a classic cubic grain film stock, the grain holds its own very, very well compared to other 100 speed film stocks. It's present in the image, but it's far from overwhelming. It's quite fine and it's not very large. The film also has excellent sharpness, easily rivaling some of the more expensive film stocks on the market. It's maybe not the best that I've seen out there, but it certainly is more than good enough. A quick few notes on the film base material itself. I found that the film stocks curl up quite significantly, which made scanning them on my flatbed scanner a bit tedious. I've also read that there can be some manufacturing defects in the film base itself. I didn't experience that with my rolls of film, but again, I shot 35mm and the manufacturing defects seem to be more common to 120, so that's maybe something to consider and I thought I'd bring it up even though I didn't encounter the issue myself. And finally, the film is known for not having the greatest archival stability. Supposedly, the images fade over a relatively short period of time compared to other more stable film stocks. I haven't had any negatives from the Fomapon 100 for long enough to be able to verify this, but I thought I'd mention it anyhow. Fomapon 100 is a budget-friendly, cheaply priced black and white film that managed to win me over with its impressive performance characteristics. This is one of the best performance per dollar film stocks on the market right now in my opinion, and certainly one of the best that I've tried. Really for about $5 to $7 a roll you can't complain at all. I'm eager to try its 200 and 400 speed siblings to see what they're like. They're also supposed to have the same wide exposure latitude as the 100 speed film that I've tried today. As a general purpose, 100 speed black and white film, Formapan 100 ticks all of the boxes for me.